All right, Dominic Castro, managing editor of CMS Wire, here with one of our contributors, Miles Sewer, and the author of a book, The Digital Mindset What It Really Takes to Thrive in the Age of Data, Algorithms, and AI. Paul Leonardi, he's the subject of the book, is the subject of Miles' column today that runs in CMS Wire. So we're so happy to have two people on. We usually have one. We, uh, with a contributors from CMS Wire, but now we got the subject of one of our contributors uh, column. So gentlemen, so good to have you on today. Great, it's great to be here, Don, thanks. Yeah. All right, Miles, let's start with you. So what was the inspiration to write your latest CMS Wire column you know, on this book? I mean, I didn't read the book yet, but it just seems so fascinating. You know, CIOs have moved into being much more about digital transformation trying to deal with disruption that's happening. And one of the things I've noticed is what kind of relationship do they have on the other side with the business? And so it, it's really been interesting to me because what CIOs would really like to have is businesses be a co-creator. And, and I was with the CIO of Carefor, which is one of the largest retailers in France uh, this week. And I was asking him, he was doing these amazing things with barcodes to revolutionized cons consumer experience at the, the store. And I said, well, how did you do that? And he said, well, we kind of created it. And then we got to a certain point, then we showed it to the business and they liked it and it became part of what we're doing. And I just don't think that's as effective relationship as you can have. And so I'm, I read this book thinking, here's a, something that every CIO should hand to their CEO and their other business leaders because they need a partnership if this is really going to work effectively as disruption gets faster and faster. Yeah, the digital mindset is like is 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 one of the key topics in this and focus and really developing that for your business. And I think some of us think we have a digital mindset, right? And until we kind of roll out there, it's like, oh, wait a minute, maybe we don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Paul, you know, you and your uh, co-author, Sadal Neely, you know. You, the folk, one of the focuses on the book, one of the subjects of the books is, is Sarah Menker, and she, you know, helped revolutionize agriculture and, and helped aid the famine crisis in sub-Saharan Africa um, using a digital mindset. I mean, that just seems fascinating and very powerful. I'd love to hear more about her tale. Sure. Yeah. Well, so we start the book talking about Sarah and how she moved from being, um, you know, an analyst on on Wall Street to developing this company, Grow Intelligence. And the reason that we thought this was such a great story to begin the book with is, you know, it begins with someone who is obviously very smart, but hasn't been really steeped in understanding, you know, how the world is changing in terms of digital tools, doesn't really understand how data operates exactly, certainly is not a programmer, um, you know, it wouldn't be what we would call like, you know, a, a super tech savvy individual. Uh, but what she recognizes is that the problems that are really apparent in the industry that she wants to tackle have somewhat to do with what's happening on the ground in Africa, but a whole lot to do with all of these databases that are disparate and not connected. And her insight is that if we could somehow get these databases pulled together, we would have a much better understanding of you know, what land looks like and how we could finance land and how we insure land. And how did Sarah like come to that realization? Well, she did it in a way that I think is really tractable for just about anybody, is that she began to recognize that there were certain skills about data analysis that she didn't have. She recognized that there were certain programming languages that she needed to have an awareness of what they could do. She began to recognize how important data were to making these big decisions. And she set herself on a path to learning enough to be conversant in all of these different areas to be able to put together an ecosystem of partners that could really produce insights that nobody else was producing. Yeah. In short, she developed, just as you said, Dom, a digital mindset. And we thought, well, if somebody like Sarah can do this, um, not saying that you know, nobody else couldn't do it, right? But, but if someone like Sarah can transition from being an expert in her industry to developing this kind of digital mindset to grow what's basically a software and data company, we want to understand how people like that are able to see in new ways and what are the kinds of skills and knowledge they need to be successful so that we can pass that along to others like the CIO of Carrefour, for example, right? And how they can help train others and bring them along the way so they can see similar things. 
Yeah. I, I love the term, you know, like learning enough to be conversant because I feel like as a journalist, Paul, like that's my life. Yeah. Right. I mean, I get asked to sit on panels talking about digital transformation and I decline because I know enough to present it to readers in a uh, digestible way. Right. But not enough to say, this is how you should do it right now. And this is what you should do. Like I get experts like miles to tell me how to do that. <laughs> um, and he'll sit on the panel and I'll moderate it. But it's, it's just a fascinating topic because, you know, I think digital is happening so fast and, I think people feel stressed that they need to keep up with every single moment and piece of data and information. But you yeah. make the point in the book that Miles points out in his column today that, you know, as, as practitioners in the business, we need to work with machines to kind of clean up what the machines are getting wrong. In other words, it's, it's such powerful technology, but, you know, they collect data and, you have to kind of go in and clean it up with, or you can have some major problems, right, Paul? Yeah. I mean, there's no aphorism in computer science and data science, right? Garbage in, garbage out. And it's kind of a trite saying, but it's, it's really important. You know, the kind of data that we put into the system reflects the kinds of outcomes that we can, we can generate, from, excuse me, generate from those data. And what we argue in the book is that, you know, you don't really need to understand 100% what your machine learning algorithm is doing. In fact, it's very difficult for anybody, even data scientists, right, to really understand exactly what your algorithm is doing if it's using neural nets and the like. Um, but what you really need to be careful about is, are we asking the right kinds of questions to be able to answer with the data that we have? Or do we need new data to answer the questions that, we're, that we need? Um, so what we try to do in the book is to help people come to terms with how do you know if you're asking the right questions, first of all. And secondarily, do you know what happens to your data along the route from when it enters into your system all the way until you're making decisions with it? And the reason that's so important to understand is that that data changes a lot throughout the process, right? People are touching it and massaging it and classifying it and reclassifying it. And at the end of the day, senior leaders in our companies are making big decisions based on the kinds of data outputs that they see. And if we don't understand the, the travels that those data have taken along the way and how they've changed, we can really be in a situation where we're making suboptimal decisions. And that's just so important for anyone to know. And so we try to map that out as part of the process that we call um, you know, an approach to computation, which is helping people to really understand not just what's happening inside your computer programs, but what's happening to sort of the stream of data that's moving across your organization. Yeah, it's fascinating because at CMSWare, we're talking a lot about creating customer experiences through machine learning and yeah. AI, like chatbots, conversational AI. And one of the things that's coming up is, you know, if you're gonna implement a chatbot, that's like the same thing as hiring someone who is going to represent your brand to everybody in the world every second of the day right? If you were hiring that person, you would have 57 interviews lined up to make sure it's the right person. So AI wise, you have to do the same thing, vet, manage, watch, rinse, repeat, you know, so. Uh, yeah, it's, that's a, it's a great analogy. And the equivalent to doing that, right, doing all those interviews is really looking at what are all of the data that are being used to train that AI chatbot? How do we make sure that those data are equitable and represent the things that we actually want? Do we have the right kind of interface that's engaging with our customers in the right sort of way? And I think those are the sort of digital analogies to the interview questions that you might ask, Don. Yeah, exactly. Uh, two final thoughts, one from each of you. Miles, um, what's the big takeaway here? I know you mentioned CIOs earlier. So if you could have one key solid takeaway to your CIO friends, uh, what would that be from the book? Well, I mean, I, 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 coming back to quality, I think they're seeing it. I mean, I just spent a bunch of time with a whole bunch of data quality vendors, and it's amazing. They're telling me the data goes in and out. And obviously, you can do some things to remediate, but we really do need to, they need to understand how to explain it to businesses. In fact, I was just talking to several folks about, first of all, you need people to make decisions with data. That's a big step. And the next thing is they have to have some literacy with data. And obviously, the book goes a long way to help there. Um, so, the, you know, CIOs are struggling at a lot of levels to help transform their organizations. Uh, the people change is hard. 
But part of helping there is getting people educated. And one of the things I really liked in the book was the notion of the 30%. You just need to understand this little sliver and this little sliver and this little sliver and you can be dangerous. And so um, I just think, you know, they need a way to get people to be more digitally literate. And I think with that, um, a lot, a lot of positives can happen to even dinosaurs. Yeah. I, I love when I read that miles in the column, when I saw the 30%, I was like, Oh, it made me feel so good. <laughs> I go, I feel like, I feel like that's where I am with all of this. I'm about 30%. And I, as a journalist go find the people who are in the 75, 85, 90, who kind of know this stuff. So, uh, Paul, one last thought from you too. You know, someone goes into a board meeting or a C-suite meeting on a Monday morning and says, hey, I read the digital mindset, what it really takes to thrive in the age of data algorithms and AI. And he's and uh, the co-authors, Paul and uh, Saval say this, and we should do this. What would that be? What's the one big takeaway? I think the big, the biggest takeaway is that you need to be able to develop enough facility to understand what's happening across your organization and enough facility to, to know what you don't know. And that's really important because just as you said, Dom, if you understand 30%, you can go out and you can find the other people that you don't, that know the stuff that you don't, but you don't even know what to ask if you don't have that 30%. And so what we try to do in the book is get people to that 30%. And I think that it's the kind of book that, you know, CIOs and CEOs should say, um, I bought into digital transformation. I'm just not sure how to get my workforce on the right path. This is the book that's going to get your workforce on the right path. Excellent. Well, thanks for covering it, Miles. Thanks for writing it, Paul. Thank you. Uh, again, it was great to catch up with you, gentlemen. I appreciate it very much. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, great rest of the week. Likewise. Thanks so much. All right.